If you look up top, it says AI to upgrade gaming to a new level, question mark, with my pet hooligan. Uh, we're going to be talking about AI and gaming. We've got a couple of great subjects lined up. And our guests from my pet hooligan are going to be here to talk about not just what they're doing with their game, uh, but just generally some of the things they've learned along the way. So we'll see what our guests think about some of the news and subjects along the way today. We're going to see what my pet hooligan has been up to. And we're going to check in with my co-host, David, who is one of the best in the game. And he's been fortunate enough to be slotted next to me. And I feel very fortunate. David, good day, sir. How are you? Oh man, glad glad to be back, Pulse. I don't I don't know what it is. I, I feel like I was just talking to you. I don't know how that happens out here in Web three, but excited to get into this one. I actually know my pet hooligan. Like I've been following them for a while, doing some very cool stuff. And you know, like all the guys up here know that we we love to talk about gaming. Oh my god, gaming and AI match made in D Gen heaven. Can't wait to get into this one. Yep, y'all are going to be fighting to keep the mic out of my hands. The good news is, is we have an esteemed panel of guests uh, who often frequent our spaces, uh, who we trust to do more speaking than me, hopefully if we've done our job right. As I look around, I see some familiar faces in the audience. I appreciate you guys all slotting in here, Roger and Matt, uh, and all the familiar faces. So uh, as we get started with everything, I'm glad that uh, you've got the familiarity here, David. We're going to flip roles, because last, last time we got together, I knew a little bit more about what was going on. This time, it sounds like you might know a little bit more that's going on. So I know, I know a lot about AI. I I know a lot about gaming, just like you said, but I'm not as familiar with what my pet hooligan is doing other than uh, what I've read about uh, what I saw coming into this. I did check out the website, which those of you who are in spaces, if you're in a place when you're listening, where you can always pull up the websites of the people that we're talking about, super helpful to do that. So make sure you guys uh, pull them up. The My Pet Hooligan page, you can find it on there uh, and check out their stuff. So David, you, you know these guys going back a little way, you say? Yeah. Oh man, Pulse. Like I've I've been following them. I even had uh one of their NFTs that is so actually I, I think I do have I, I still do have like two of their NFTs. I just don't even check some of those wallets because looking through them is uh is traumatizing. But love my pet hooligan. Like they're they're one of the games that when everybody was saying there's no fun games in blockchain, my pet hooligan was one that I used to point to. So you know it, it's like this big open world. It's it's an actual video game with NFTs and crypto and all the cool stuff we love. So. You know, uh, ab absolutely, bro. I'm a, I'm a fan of them. Now, last time we had a conversation, we had like a 15-minute sidebar about how important it is that games... We, we talked about how they need to have that rush home from work to get back to it feel about like how games were lacking that same... I remember, and I know I'm not trying to be nostalgic like that, but there have been games where you're like, man, I just can't wait to get off of work or get home from school and run home and play it. And I've always felt like a lot of the games that were promised what I was going to get in Web 3 really failed to make me very excited to play them, and they end up feeling like farming and grinding and stuff like that. So I'm excited to hear that you've got history with them. Uh, everybody else down in the audience, as I look around down there, I see some other people I know we've talked to about uh, their gaming history. Matt, uh, you, you love Web 3 games and stuff. We've been here before right buddy hey so um i just noticed there was another matt in the audience and you said looking around the audience um so i wondered if that was my point to jump in or you were talking to matt with the uh d god with the youth so yeah I, I didn't see the one with the d god buddy sorry that was for you <laughs> all good um but yeah thanks for inviting me up and uh, of course i love to talk about gaming and i think my pet hooligan are definitely some of the pioneers in the space, especially with the stuff with they're doing with AI. Love to find out more about that. And um, yeah, AI and gaming, I've got a lot of spicy takes on that one. So I will try to uh, not get too spicy too quick. Slow burn. You're, pro you're promising that slow come on. I like that. He's not going to hit us too hard. Uh, I see some other familiar faces. Kyle, is, uh, how are you doing today, man? Are you into some Web3 games? Oh yeah, we're not only into Web3 games, we work for Web3 games, so I'm I'm super pumped. I'm playing them, active in the, you know, I live, breathe, and eat Web3 gaming every day. Um, and yeah, super excited about the space. It's something I've been talking about for uh, probably the past year or year and a half on AI and kind of the convergence of uh, Web3 gaming and AI meeting together. So uh, excited to be here today, and uh, it's a pleasure to be on. Appreciate you sliding in, man. Ryan, how are you doing today, man? You looking for some Web3 game action? Dude, really excited to be here today. Good morning and good evening, depending on uh, on where you are in the world. All I do is stay. I live Web3 gaming. I sit hunched over in my chair, pushing the frontier of this technology. Excited to be here with a bunch of other core builders and should be a good one today. Appreciate you sliding in. Roger, I see you made it in again, man. Thank you for sliding through for some Web3 gaming conversation. Hope you're doing all right. 
Doing well, guys, as always. Good to see some familiar faces in the crowd. Um, you know, these days, all I play is Web3 games, it feels like. So, you know, obviously, this is a good conversation. AI is a big part of our future, as so is Web3 Gaming. So interesting to see people's takes today. I can feel the tension uh, for Toki waiting to see if I get his name right this time. Did I get it right this time? You got it. <laughs> this time you got it. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if you give it to Matthew, he'll butcher it again. <laughs> no, man. I never, when I get called out like that, I never will, man. Thank you for sliding through for Web3 Gaming Talk today. No problem, man. Super excited to be here and uh, keep to know more about what my pet hooligan is doing. Yep. You see, the AMG I Studio account is here, you guys. That's one of the accounts that we're going to be talking to about what they're up to. And then my pet hooligan is also here. We've got a couple of guys that are going to be here. David, I'm going to let you kick this off. Last time we started the conversation about how the market was going kind of sideways, and we were talking about how sideways market action makes people bored. Bored equals gaming, right? Like that's when nothing's happening on the charts. We swerve over to the PlayStation, or where do we go? Oh, man, honestly, Pulse, for me, it's always gaming. And sometimes I look over there at the markets. That, that, that's why I'm, I'm excited for this one. We got a bunch of vets up here. And, I mean, I, I want to just dive right into it, to be honest. Like, I want to get everybody's thoughts on this whole AI and gaming. But, but first, like a little icebreaker. I'm curious what everybody thinks the, be the best way to really utilize that. I mean, what's your favorite part about AI and gaming? Most of the people that I know, they want to have that, you know, the the... The, what, what are they called? Like in-game in, in -game AIs. I'm sure someone will correct me right there uh, once, they, once they get to the mic. But, you know, there's that. We've got, we've got prompting, which is incredible. I mean, I want to be able to talk to ChatGPT, and it just does a lot of cool stuff for me. And I, I know I'm leaving stuff out. Like, I don't want to spoil it. I want to hear from some of the speakers. But, you know, I'm going to just give my first thoughts. Having these different characters in the game and having AI in those makes it so that these games can have a unique experience for a variety, for all the different users. Like, I can play the same game as Matthew, and I might get a different experience in that because of AI, which is an incredible. Oh, my God. Think of the possibilities there. And then prompting, bro, talking to Siri, and then all of a sudden you've got a game, you've got a level. That That's some next-level stuff right there, too. I mean, all right, guys, I'm going to... Instead of just letting you raise your hand, I'm gonna I'm gonna start calling on people. You guys know I love to play Eeny Meeny Miny Mo, and Matthew has been my favorite to call on every single time. So Matthew, over to you. Hey, uh, thanks for that. And um, this time I'm not sharing the space. I've already done that, so um, I can unmute on time. But yeah, I'm Matt, the uh, CEO of Call of the Void, and we've been using AI um, to speed up the production process. Essentially, it's really handy for creating a ton of concepts and then building them in 3D. Soon it's going to be really handy for building things in 3D from scratch. And then even sooner, it's going to be a platform where you can basically just prompt a game into existence. And I think this is going to really lead much more to a creator-led, or an in, especially in this space, in an attention-led space. It's going to be the biggest, biggest voices, the biggest followings that are going to start creating game experiences that people want to share in. Because individualizing your game is great, but you don't tell people about your dream unless you're really like family or you know them. So if you have a very individual game, it's kind of cool for you, but it's not a shared experience. So I think it's going to be basically, it's going to lead a lot more to sort of personality or creator-led projects. Um, and I'm all for it. I think it's going to be interesting. Oh, absolutely. Love that take. And all right, Kyle, raise your hand. I don't have to play any meeny, miny, mo this time. What are, what's on your mind? Yeah, so, man, there's just so much. Anything that AI is touching, literally, it will consume. And <clears throat> I think uh, I was most impressed, obviously, with what NVIDIA showcased with their, you know, NPC that was actually talking and having dialogue with the player uh, to create a more immersive experience. And uh, so immersive experiences are going to be uh, kind of ground zero of what I see in, in gaming moving forward. Uh, next is going to be, like, that UGC content, which at scale, like, AI can create, like, all this new content in games now you know swords weapons cosmetics so i see a future where almost it'll have to be curated on a game level because there's just going to be so much ugc coming from ai you know how are you going to be able to manage that and uh, not only on the data side but that's a lot of like new assets coming in game so i do see a kind of a collision course like on how games and developers are going to have to manage uh, these types of different assets and maybe have curated experiences uh, per se so um yeah super excited i see projects out there building um you know i've seen platforms that are 
having, you know, doing UGC AI content out there as well. So I definitely see a lot of movement around the space. Oh, man, absolutely love that one and completely agree there. Like, I, I think this is really going to usher in a, a completely new new era of gaming. Combining AI with blockchain, I mean, oh, I, I can't even fathom what's, what's going to happen in the next year. But Tokir, all right, I think I may have just butchered your name. Apologies in advance, but over to you. Damn, my name has to be the topic. <laughs> okay, I think I'll keep some short name on the Twitter. So I think, yeah, look, uh, when we talk about AI in general, especially in gaming, I, I don't think it, it's only limited to the idea of what we really think it is, right? So we uh, often we take it for like, you know, AI generated tools, it can be AI generated this thing. I'm kind of losing him in the blockchain, David, is that but you too? One of the biggest backing on him. Yeah, a little, <laughs> little regular, yeah. but I think he's back. Can you hear me now? Totally not back. David, I'm a... Are there? Oh, now I got him loud and clear. Can you hear us? Can you guys hear yes, me? Yes, I can now. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks, man. So, yeah, I, I think, like, from the studio's perspective, already Web2 uh, has been trying to imply the use of AI into multiple uh, segments, especially if you look at the mobile games from Tencent to Crafton. Uh, there is a... There's a lot of matchmaking uh, aspect that is being utilized, uh, especially in the player matchups. Means that, let's say, uh, if you are playing and you are at a certain level, considering on the movements and the reflexes that you have within the game, especially in the certain given moments, the AI generates a kind of a competition for you. So how it helps, uh, especially Web2 Studios, is that, you know, uh, instead, even though if you don't have the uh, consistent amount of DAUs or MAUs or online players, they use those AI models to actually counter your competition within the game. Now, on the other side of the things that where the biggest monetization opportunity, uh, like, you know, comes for uh, the studio perspective is like, you know, uh, when we generically talk about the data in gaming, the data in the most precious data, actually, like the most... Uh, uh, expensive data in the whole, uh, like, you know, globally is actually gamers' data because it's like the, the youth-generated data. So, um, in a perspective, uh, what, what, what we are looking at is like, uh, like if, if we see any two countries, like let's say India and China were recently going at it, banning each other's games, and especially like India, they're banning a few of their games. and like, you know, uh, element. Losing him in the blockchain again, David. I'm still here. Are you here? We're losing you again, buddy. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm here, Paul. So I think, I think we got Toby here wrestling over there with Skynet on chain. Uh, all right, looks like Skynet won, but we are going to give Tokir a second chance later on in this space. I, I, I feel that Tokir is one of those guys who would be fighting for the resistance, making sure that we get to keep the games in the hands of the people. Get Skynet out of there. BlackRock can't have our Bitcoins. We're keeping the games. We're keeping the Bitcoins. I want to throw it over to K2, a new speaker that we just brought up. I mean, we're talking about AI in gaming. What's the best way to be using AI in gaming these days? Or what, what's, the, what's the favorite? What's your favorite? Or what's the best? Uh, you know, I, I think when you're talking about AI and gaming, it's, I, I like it from the creator standpoint. But, hey, maybe I'm biased. That's the project that we're working on is generative AI in gaming. Uh, I think when you're, you know, I, I'm a big fan of user-generated content. And I think user-generated content in gaming is that, that next step. And when you look at it from a blockchain perspective, you know, uh, I think I was just having this epiphany today is I think the blockchain gives a level of transparency to AI and creation because you can create these immutable passes of things that are created. But when, when you're looking at kind of the, the next iteration in gaming is giving people even greater control over the environments that they play in. Um, you know, that's, that's just kind of my quick and dirty on, on something like that. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And I've got a more focused question for Ryan. I mean, Ryan, are, are we going to have a day where, you know, may, maybe we can have AIs in these games that are like almost copies of some of the popular streamers out there? 
I mean, just a Matt Ninja, Mongol, some of those big guys. Can we one day be playing inside of a game like BR1 or some some other first person shooter, and that's the guy that we're going up against? Like as is, we we already see influencers making AI personalities out of themselves so that they can create infinite content, be live twenty four seven, three hundred and sixty five days of the year. So there's no reason we can't anticipate them selling their in-game data to create a replica of themselves to play all of these games at the same time, right? I can't I can't play a hundred different games that I'm sponsored by in you know, 24 hours, so how do I do it? Well, I got my, my AI version of myself playing across all these games. I, I don't know if that's the reality of the situation, um, but when it comes to influencers, you know, we, we already see so many crazy products like this when it comes to streaming. On the gaming side, I, I really see AI reducing the underlying overhead of studios, and we, we see that internally, right? And this enables us to stretch our budget that much farther and compete with other people that, you know, in larger studios where there's a lot of red tape, they're, they're not necessarily using AI to generate their maps or generate characters or generate in-game and you know, texts that their, their NPCs are using. And that is like a, a big win for the indie studios. Separate and distinct, I, I see an obstacle and a problem where you're going to see a lot of these MMOs and story games where people have like a chat GPT wrapped NPC dialogue. And we're going to, it's going to feel like all of the games NPCs are the same. They all have like the same types of responses and the same types of prompts. And, and it's going to feel very cookie cutter. So the guys that are first movers, it'll, it'll be cool, but then it'll quickly become like, like, ah, like everybody has this, this engine for their, their NPCs and something that I, I think that a lot of studios are aware of though. Oh man, I, I can't wait for that. As, as you're talking, I am literally picturing this entire speaker panel playing inside of a game, some AI, some NPCs, me and Paul's protecting Mario, maybe capture the flag. I don't know. It just sounds super fun. Um, something else. All right, guys, we're, we're, we're going to move on to another topic. Well, kind of the same topic, but more, more focused again. And that's with these chat bots. I mean, that's, that's another area that I really, really see AI coming in. And I, I don't know if it'll be something similar to advertising. You know, maybe it'll be able to look at your searches and then all of a sudden one of these NPCs in these games, they'll start talking to me about how I lost my life savings on meme coins. And, you know, that may be good, that may be bad, but it's, it's definitely moving us forward. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Like, different types of AI chatbots, different AI NPCs that really personalize the experience to the user. All right, go, go for it, Ryan. I go run it back in a dystopian future. Imagine right now a lot of the things you're prompted with on your Instagram feed, on your social feed, on your Amazon are things that you've been talking about. Your microphone is on. Your search history is being used to, to optimize your experience, as we like to refer to it. And it truly is optimizing your experience. Let me tell you, like to, to be reminded that I needed to buy this thing, like I appreciate that. You know, we, we we forget the small details. When it comes to a virtual environment, imagine you're in VR and you're you're walking through the oasis, some some digital environment, and this NPC walks up to you and it's like, hey David, like I hear you're a degenerate gambler. Please step into my casino because based off of your search history, you know, you're a degenerate gambler. Um, and in a similar capacity, whether it's your, your buying behavior, your gambling behavior, they, there, there's always something that can be leveraged and monetized by a personality. And that's where the AI steps in. They, they take this data. They know that you are an X aged male from this specific region. Um, you know, this is the language that you speak and we could prompt you with a, a set of, of communications that may increase the conversion of my product, whether that's making you a user or selling you something. And that's, that's exciting and scary. Oh man. I, that, to me, that's, that is exciting. I can't wait for 69 epiphanies a day because all of a sudden this AI is reading my mind and just putting it all on chain and in the game. All right. We're, we're going to go over to Kyle and then K2. And I want to get some thoughts from Pulse. I, I know Pulse is creative and a fun guy over there, but go for it, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, similar to what Ryan was saying, but even, like, you know, just in daily life, like, mixed reality, uh, I know VR, yeah, that's a good, you know, where I was kind of going with it, too, uh, but even AR, like, there's AR games, uh, I think, you know, even Niantic has their a couple of games, and they've integrated Amazon into it as well, um, so I think, yeah, like, shopping behavior and, and behaviors in general are definitely going to be, you know, easier to, to deliver goods and services, at kind of like, you know, your daily life, you're just going down the street, you have your glasses on in the future and then all of a sudden you see an ad for you know 
buy this Call of Duty pack and you're like, oh yeah, like I forgot to buy that the other day or, you know, you're, you buy, go to Walmart and buy, buy milk. You forgot that. So I think, yeah, that's where things are going to go. And naturally we're starting to see the integrations with, you know, mixed reality and AR games and things like that already. We're starting to see integration with Amazon exploring it. They have like a actual, you know, platform that, you know, uh, games can go to, to, to kind of integrate Amazon into their to their stack so um it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out in games as well um especially the ones that are going for more of the immersive experience i think there's a well i think we'll start to see that a, a lot of cross collaboration at first between web3 games and kind of these experiences and we saw it back in 2021 and i think we'll continue to see like more more of that cross collaboration organically in web3 and hopefully it takes hold there because i i'd like to see a lot of games uh collaborate with each other but yeah uh, back to what you guys are saying is um yeah we'll see a lot of very curated uh very precise uh, type of advertising and i think the future is super bright for uh you know the, the first web 3 platform to kind of bridge web 2 with web 3 and advertising behavior and kind of what google had d done the past few decades which is use pretty much ai machine learning to you know you know, deliver better results what you're searching for so um that's actually where a lot of where my expertise uh, originally was was studying google's algorithms back in the day but but yeah, uh, whoever does it first in Web3, that's uh, you're looking at a possible unicorn there. Oh, man, I absolutely love that. Amazon, Niantic, Google, like, tell them to come over here and drop an NFT collection or something. I'm sure they would have a banger PFP. And uh, sec second thought, I'm waiting for the first news article where AI, this kind of system, gets someone in a relationship in trouble. You, you guys use your imagination with that one. But uh, K2, over to you. <laughs> You know, I, I love all the points that, that people are making about, you know, AI being a facilitator within certain environments. And I, you know, one of the things that we look at is how it can help facilitate the creation process. So when, when you look at things like game engines, for example, Unity, Unreal, these things require people with special skill sets. You know, for us, our background is in no code development um, and bringing that into the generative AI space. And one of the things that we've looked at, like you talk about chatbots, is helping to um, assist with the creation process. So one of the things that makes like game engines like not like not enjoyable is it can become hard. So imagine having a chatbot that you know understands you like we talked about all of the information that it has on you, but then assisting you in the creation process, but then also letting you know what's fun and exciting. So imagine the game creation process being refined as you are building it, you know, and then you're able to layer in like what you guys talked about the, the different advertising things, you know, the, the in game features, because I think, you know, in game NPCs that kind of understand you as a person, like I'm just thinking like Final Fantasy, like where I'm actually able to have a conversation um with an mpc but you know now taking that a step further into hey i want to create a game like this and then a chat bot's just like well you know these types of games are really popular right now what about adding these features or hey you want to add this type of feature into a game why don't we do it something like this like understanding the nuance that goes along with creation i think will honestly allow that creator economy to explode because there is a certain set of people that's on the fence, not necessarily super confident in their ability to create things. And if you pair that with an AI that understands the creator, but then also understands the mass market, like just imagine like what is what would what, what people would be capable of um, if we combine those two. Oh man, absolutely love that take too. What what we're talking about? This is starting to sound like Siri and Jarvis had a baby. And it just loved meme coins. I, I, I don't know how these thoughts just keep coming into my head. Like, Pulse, how, how are you feeling about all this that we're talking about? I was scribbling notes. <laughs> so AI chatbots, what I think about, because you kept saying prompts, is for me, I've played a lot of games that require headsets, and a lot of my frustration stemmed from having, how can I put this gently, scrub teammates on the other side of my headset who maybe didn't understand the tactical calls I was making. Or maybe you've played sports games where uh, maybe you wished you could actually call the plays because you had a headset on. When I think of chatbots, I actually think about being able to put on the headset maybe and have communication. Uh, an example would be like a Rainbow Six game where it's a slow 
slow tactical shooter, being able to inform your NPC teammates like, hey, I'm about to breach this door, make sure you cover the window, check the backyard. I, I have a, a version of chatbots for me where I think of them as that audio assistant where you're going to be able to cue them up and ask them to do things on the game and stuff like that. So I made notes about that. Uh, and then what I really want to add, ask the, the guests here that we've got from uh, My Pet Hooligans and stuff. For me, AI's primary purpose in a game from a development standpoint is going to be to increase stick rate. Stick rate, meaning how long does someone stay within a game or stay within an ecosystem or stay online? Because gamers don't think of it this way, but developers are following daily active users, unique daily logins, unique IPs, and stick rate is a major part of what AI stands to actually correct. Because there are games, uh, and I'll name one just because I know everyone's got it on the tip of their tongue, Grand Theft Auto 6 is is highly anticipated, uh, and what Grand Theft Auto 5 and 4 lacked is the ability to eventually still feel fresh. Because eventually you're going to have heard all the radio stations, you will have heard all the NPCs say their things and stuff, but what if in a persistent environment it was never ever old? If, it, if they could keep you in the game longer through AI, by using AI to give you a not a noticeable experience, but a seamless experience that makes you just stay in the game longer, that's what I want chatbots to do. Whether you're actually chatting with them or they're just in the game participating, that's what I wrote down uh, mostly after that. And I'd be wondering what my pet hooligan thinks about stick rates and stuff like that. We yeah. can hello, 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 everybody. One first, I just wanted as a group here. So we're joining from the AMGI Studios headquarters here. I am Luke Paglia, the COO, one of the co-founders. We have Colin Brady, Chief Creative Officer, CTO, one of the co-founders. We have Kevin Mack, our Chief Unreal Architect. We have Wes Paglia as well, what our Web3 uh, Creative Director. We're all joining here into this awesome spaces, and I gotta say, man, this is freaking cool. Yeah. Uh, I apologize if I curse ahead of time. I am trying not to, but this is awesome to be a part of this. Like, we sit around all the time, just throwing stuff against up against a board internally, and always coming up with kind of these wacky, crazy ideas. And it's so refreshing to be sitting here today, like hearing, you know, K two, hearing, you know, David, hearing, you know, all of you guys just jumping in. And talking about this stuff that gets us so excited about what is the future of gaming and what's the future of integrating AI into everything that we're, we've been building. Yeah. For sure. So, you know, talking about stick rate, like, yeah, I mean, you know, we have Kevin here who's been a long time, you know, game developer, um, you know, working at, at some, you know, top, top studios and um, bringing in the mindset of like, okay, yeah, how, how do we take the cool new technologies emerging today, roll that into a game that you know we think is fun and our community is thinking is fun but how do we make that even more sticky even more fun even more something that that is is um you know almost evergreen yeah i mean i think that comes down to making the environment feel like something you participate in you know something yeah. that's, that's alive and you're a contributor to it i mean and i think that's the big thing that AI gives us, um, you know, with the caveat that you kind of got to split AI into two giant fields. You know, there's generative AI and there are the deep learning systems, and they're related, but they're not identical. But uh, but what AI does is it creates the opportunity for these systems to understand you and react to you and, and allow you to be a participant, not just a passive consumer. Where like, I mean, I love I love this this comment about like. GTA 4, 5, and now coming into 6, you know, where where that's true. I mean, you know, GTA 5 is fantastic because it's huge, but yeah, eventually it's a static environment. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's not going to change. It's not going to respond. And that's that's what's exciting to me is is how do we get you into this environment Absolutely. so that you you actually feel like you're you're part of it. And that was simply not possible previously, but now now it becomes possible. And and, and the combination of these, these things... Are, it kind of allows you to do that. I mean, generative AI allows the system to respond to you. The deep learning systems, meanwhile, allow the system to make intelligent choices based on what you're doing and, you know, play well against you, have have characters do interesting things in the environment autonomously. So it starts to feel like living space, you know, and that's 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 something we've only scratched the surface and beginning to explore, but that that's really where we're kind of diving. Yeah, and, and, and leading with a fun game first. I mean, Absolutely. that's the core yeah. of what we've been all about. It's like, if you don't have a fun game first, you can put the coolest tech into it, right. but it doesn't freaking matter. Absolutely. So, you, you guys had mentioned immersion before, and ultimately, let's say we're talking about, you know, that, that seamless experience, but it's, it's at this point, we now have the beginnings of the abilities to create a seamless, endless experience, and that's really cool. 
Yeah, yeah and, exactly. And, and, the, and I think that's kind of what's that's that's how entertainment is changing now. Where entertainment up to this point was kind of a one way street. You know, yeah. stuff was stuff was created and then and then went to you. I mean, it's a little bit like kind of what Chris Dixon talks about. You know, the, the reader, then the writer, and, uh -huh. and and then going into the owner. And, and, and love love his book, but uh, but you know we're. In, in most media and games and stuff like that, we've really been in the read era. You know, it's like right. you watch a movie, you watch a TV show. Huh. But in most of the rest of our life, we've, we've become used to being participants. Yeah. And I think the important thing is becoming each other's content, which we've kind of been able to do with multiplayer games. But as, as one of the panelists talked about, some, sometimes you're sometimes people you're playing with are kind of jerks. <laughs> you know, and so. Uh, you know, to, to create a system that can to respond to you, yeah, right. And it can respond to you in, in that way, but but you know, where you're a participant in it, but it, you, they don't have to be like a whole bunch of other people always on the other side. They can be yeah. people when, when you want them to be. Right. Exactly. You know. So I, 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 I I'm, this is a massive frontier. Yeah. 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 And, and to be in it. We will talk for days too, so always interrupt us, please. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just wrote something down. I want to highlight something he just said out loud because it gave me the creeps, and I love it. He just said. We've become each other's content, uh, and he was referencing multiplayer games. And I know what you mean is like on Fortnite, it needs you need ninety nine other uh, uh, Smurfs or Scrubs or Randos or whatever to be the content for you to be on the island. So he doesn't mean it as dark as what I took it, but man, that is a sentence that I am writing down to carry away because I love the idea that we've become each other's content. It almost means if you would entertain this thought, uh, I'm not sure which one of you it was that said that. Does that mean that the devs are farming out content creation to the people? because you've got creators like Ninja and all these other guys that, that the developers couldn't have even dreamed of having that kind of an influence. So by making each other the in-game content, does this, again, like AI will, take the labor off of the development teams by crowdsourcing it like that? I Eventually. I, so the, the, the short answer is that it takes a lot of effort to make the game mod-ready. Uh, the longer answer is that's what's most exciting to me. I mean, I look at, like, you know, long, long, long ago, you know, it's like, I mean, because I, I, was, I was old enough to play Doom when it was new. And, um, and the thing that made Doom an incredible experience and made it last for years was not just that the original game design was fantastic, but this massive modding community arose accidentally around it, um, where, like, people just figured out how to hack the, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, I think they were called WAD files, if I remember right, like, but how to hack those. And then, like, people just started making these tools. And all of a sudden, you had like you know some dude went made a uh, made an alien total conversion for Doom. You know, Doom, you had like this this whole <laughs> ecosystem, and then you see the same thing with games like Skyrim and 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 before that, or the Oblivion that just had these huge huge afterlives that are mostly mod generated. So this is huge to me. So um, I want this to be the thing. I want I want to create an environment where where people can create stuff, where they can create like their own you know, their own space that people can move in into, into and play play in. And where they don't have to be, you know, they don't have to have a CS degree to uh, to create this stuff. Yeah. And so so it's it's very much a thing that I think about a lot. Um, in terms of like setting ourselves up to be able to do that, where we're at right now with Hooligan is we've set the system up to be ready for that. And so for instance, you know, using the asset manager in Unreal, which allows allows this, the architecture to recognize externally sourced assets and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff we're doing right now to make sure we don't paint ourselves into a corner to keep ourselves from being able to do it. But we haven't really, we haven't we haven't started yet doing the most exciting part to me, which is uh, which is building the infrastructure that allows people to create. But you could say it's already happened because right yeah. now every single piece of graffiti in the game is 100% community generated. Oh, yes. Every oh, single yeah. piece of graffiti on the walls. People submit these through Discord, and I think we probably put 99% of them up on the yeah. walls. And then people, uh, players like to come find their graffiti and yeah. pose in front of their graffiti and do some kind of a moat. Yeah. So they're already yeah. part of the world. And that's just a small glimpse of how active people get when they see a little piece of something they created put into a game. Can you imagine when we're customizing characters and cars and buildings and property and you can tour people? Like, I know some of you guys in here have taken people through your metaverse house and how proud you are of that stuff. Just, just like a kid showing somebody a dollhouse. I got to pause for just a second for station identification. We're halfway through. I want to point out the fact that we're at nearly 200 comments down there. Look at you guys commenting machines down there, but we can do better than that. Let's get that up again. Uh, go down there if you haven't already and drop 
drop a comment for us. Let us know about My Pet Hooligan. Tag them down there. Let them know you appreciate them having the space. So we could all be here today. Wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them today. Uh, and what you can also do is share the space again. Get some more shares out there. That's helpful. Follow everybody that's been up on the speaker panel. Uh, and I'm going to hand it back over to, to uh, Matthew because he's had his hand up so long it's broken. But uh, halfway through the spaces, make sure you do the likes, shares, comments for me, everybody. Cheers, buddy. So thanks. I think there's some really great points from my pet hooligan. And especially when you combine that with the whole uh, GTA 6. And imagine that you have a world where instead of all the doors being locked like cyberpunk, imagine if every single house wasn't, it, it didn't need to exist. The devs don't need to model everything. They don't need to arrange the newspapers. It doesn't need to be the same 10 assets in different ways. It can be literally any house. Like if you're a criminal in uh, GTA, you can break into someone's random house. I mean, it depends how intelligent these AIs are going to be. Are they going to get to that sort of semi-AGI status where all we're doing is we're just basically getting little Timmy to shoot people who are scared that they're going to lose their family or they're going to cry because their AI wipes dead? At what point and how much learning will these characters have? How real will they get? I think is really interesting for the future because it can be that you end up with AI agents actually earning money in crypto games and then being able to spend it. If we have an interconnected metaverse, there could be characters in one game start just playing another game and earning that and start becoming something. It's really crazy. I think if we're all going to say that the world is going to end because of ASI or AGI, it's probably going to be a badly programmed computer villain that's actually going to destroy us all. Um, something that is smart enough to run other AIs. I think we are getting into the point where some, some people will be able to play a GTA-like game and never complete the so-called main missions, but end up having a relationship and then owning a coffee shop and doing something really weird and some other player comes in and guns them down. It's going to be really Matrix-like, I think, um, but just with worse graphics. But we're going to see some really strange stuff happening soon. And uh, I just saw that Sorty and partnered with an influencer I know. These guys are actually doing generative game worlds. This is crazy. Generative assets. When you have fully generative environments that can just load up based on who you are, what you're doing, I think that's really where it gets a little bit scary. You made me think, I'm going to go to Kyle with his hand up, but you think it's going to get weird in Web3, man. It got so weird on Second Life, and that's like 25 years old. Imagine how weird it gets when you can put on a headset and never leave the metaverse, dude. We can't even get into it. This is a PG Spaces, man. Your parents are here. Calm down. Kyle, you're up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes me think and, and wonder, too. And, and that's something I think about a lot. Uh, one of the platforms I actually like that really uh, kind of integrates uh, Web 2, Web 3 really great together is actually uh, Ready Player Me, where they have like these avatars you can either create or, you know, buy assets and, you know, cosmetically upgrade them. And then I saw BMW integrated that. I'm like, hmm, now we're starting to see the convergence of, you know, Web 2, Web 3, you know, in real life, along with these in-game experiences as well, because you can use your Ready Player Me avatar in some of these games. And then that goes back to right back to what we were saying earlier is this UGC content or, you know, the lack thereof of, of people, you know, previously that weren't using AI that, that kind of were just handicapped and now that they have AI they're able to make all these different assets so I think what we're going to see is an explosion of like new you know new age artists using AI and and we're going to start to see more convergence in real life you know with uh you know everything that I just mentioned with not only like big companies integrating these types of uh, platforms into their their cars and their technology um, but also you're able to use these in game which is pretty cool so kind of we're starting to see the first time in in you know these different technologies converge to where it's it's making not only your real life but the digital uh, experience more immersive as well so i think we're going to see like the the floodgates really open uh, as we move forward into this next like era of ai and then another area that really interests me is the map making where you know traditionally like you can have all these different data points and and you know ai is able to monitor like what players do what part of the map they go to and then you know base a model off of that and create different style of, of different maps that really make it a, a better experience for games as well and i think a lot of developers uh in the future will use tools like these to to out of the box have a fun game loop that doesn't like they don't have crappy maps like today in, in previous years you just kind of had to create a map based on your knowledge uh, or you had to be a you know a great map maker uh, so to speak so um i think we'll see a lot of like you know the, the loads being lifted here in certain uh aspects as well in games oh, 
my uh, my uh, my pet hooligan threw their hand up. I think off the BMW and the brand stuff. Is that what got your attention? You guys were getting ready after you answer this to go into a deeper dive with my pet hooligan. But what's what he get with your throw your hand up? What do you say? Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit of that. Also, you know, I mean, for everything we've been working so hard on, um, you know, we we are a development partner of Nvidia, working hard on taking the best cutting edge technology out there and putting it in through our lens of AI chatbots that are both commercial ready, like for big companies like you you mentioned there, but also for more of a consumer based uh, model as well, how we roll it out to our community, um, you know, through upcoming, you know, collections, also how we roll into the game. So we have a lot that we're about to dive into, and I know Colin's chomping at the bit <laughs> to dive into the personality-based uh, bits here. Yeah, you know, you know, we start with personality. I mean, going back to our DNA of this company, you know, I was an early Pixar guy. I was there in the first early days of Toy Story. Got to work closely with Steve Jobs, and it was a real honor to be there. But you know, you don't. There's no such thing as a neutral character in the world, or hopefully in a movie. So all of our characters, we're really trying to magnify whatever that unique personality is. And I always like to say, when anybody steps in our studio and when we hire any new employee, I always like to say, what's your superpower? And our job as you know, leaders in the studio is to magnify that superpower. And I, I truly believe every single person on earth has one. And it's, 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 it's weird, it's, it's full of contradictions, but then they have some special kind of ability. So we're trying to magnify that in the game bring these personalities out. We have such a vibrant community of, I don't know, you know, Lord Victor and Doobie Doo and Stax and all these amazing, crazy amazing personalities community. and people that are developing their own personal brand. And so what we're doing with AI is we're allowing these, these characters, our next release coming soon, called The Others, called The Others, will have AI built in that will, they're all starting with a built-in personality, just like real humans have. Like every single person is born with a personality. So we're mixing all these things together uh, backstories and childhood memories and future goals and all of a sudden you get a spirit big, animals your spirit animal all these things you know myers briggs personalities yeah and mixing all these things together and all of a sudden you get billions of unique combinations and then that's only the starting point these things then evolve and and can be inserted with your own interests now over time you're curating your own unique personality your own tamagotchi that's growing and evolving these things could possibly be licensed out to other people. Because let's face it, when you go on ChatGPT and you ask a question, it gives you a very neutral response, a very boring response. And usually you don't want to learn history through someone who says, well, it depends. You know, or, or it's complicated. Or it's complicated. You, know, you, you, want, you want a point of view. And I think that's what humans offer. And I think that's what we're working really hard to build into our characters in, in our next collection called The Others. Yeah, absolutely. So can I ask you a really broad question that's going to make you feel like I backed the train up like half a mile, though? But we yeah, need to absolutely. Pretend, let's pretend like everybody in here has no idea who you guys are or why there's four voices coming from this one account. I'm going to ask a broad question. Ready? What is AMGI? Because you guys are here and we keep saying my pet hooligan, my pet hooligan. But there is, we need to talk about AMGI and then we need to get to Carrot as well. So what is AMGI? What's the background? Yeah, so we're a content studio that's embracing the latest and, uh, and greatest technology and pioneering the mix of art and technology. So when we started, you know, uh, Kevin Mack and I were at a, at a, at a studio before this one um, uh, that made the Game of Thrones TV shows and other things and, and previs, and he was the one that convinced me to, to drink the Kool-Aid for Unreal, the Unreal Engine. And the idea of real-time rendering was always been kind of a North Star, how to make uh, Hollywood content TV shows and feature films, but using gaming technology, real-time rendering. So in those days, this was five years ago, I said, Let, you know, can we do Pixar-style characters using Unreal? Most people said, well, that's impossible. Unreal's made for soldiers and zombies. It and never gets squashed and stretchy you know, faces. You don't get those, really, yeah, those great Pixar yeah. faces. And, well, great, let's be the first. Yeah. Let's be the yeah. first to do this. So we were back then pioneering motion capture technology, real-time, very animated characters along the way. Uh, met Roger Paglia, CEO, and uh, we found some funding, and we thought, wow, you know, this is much bigger than just content. All of a sudden, NFTs were exploding, and, and we said, wait a second, we just assembled the world's best Unreal developers to make content. Why not work, go hard into gaming? So let me, let me jump in here, too. You know, a big part of the, at the core of this company, you know, we were creating real-time animation technologies, and we were creating just bunch of random, you know, rapid IP. We were just trying to come up with new IP, pitching it to the studios, and it was pre-COVID. It was at a time where, 
you know, Netflix and all these big studios were, were trying to get content at a pretty rapid pace. And they're looking at us saying, okay, you guys are really interesting because you have new technology that's changing the way that we would have to do it internally. You have cool IP. How do we use you guys? How do we, how do we tap into this? Because we weren't just a, hey, we're a couple of creatives come to the table. We're technology and a creative company. And it was, you know, kind of a blessing for the studio that we had to go through COVID because it reshaped the, the entertainment industry. And it allowed us to say, okay, we're original IP creators and technology creators. Let's go into a new space that's going to embrace that. Yeah. yeah. Enter the Web3 space. That's where we jumped with my pet hooligan. Having the gaming background that, that we brought to the table mixed with the animation and, and entertainment, you know, backgrounds, we went heavy into just pushing into this gaming, you know, space, into the Web3 gaming space. And then, you know, it was always that core concept yeah, of this company to say, okay, we want to, in, we want to integrate machine learning into, into real-time animation. When can we do that? Right. And look what happened about, you know, I kind of like this time last year, a little bit before, where open AI and, and, you know, open source, you know, uh, um, uh, LLMs became, yeah. yeah, became available to us. Our technology and our patents plugged right into that and to allow us to push our initiatives forward and take all these cool things that are available, all these cool pieces of technology, put it into the MyPet Hooligan ecosystem, put it into the carrier ecosystem, put it into the game, and then see, okay, how does this work with our community and where can this go beyond our community? Yeah, how can it go to, to expand enterprises? This. How can this be bigger than what it is today? So I hope that answered your question of kind of who we are and how we got here. But <laughs> AMGI Studios is a studio behind My Pet Hooligan. Uh, My Pet Hooligan is our flagship project. It does. That more broadly answers it. And then it leads to the very next question, because you mentioned the Carrot Coin, K-A-R-R-A-T, Carrot Coin ecosystem. How does that tie in? Because that's also something we haven't brought up to this point. We've been talking about My Pet Hooligan. So what is the Carrot Coin and how does it fill in the ecosystem gap? That's a great question. Some may pronounce it Car Rat, but that is not the way to pronounce <laughs> it. It is Carrot. Um, and actually, this might be a good opportunity to introduce um, one of our other counterparts as well. Luke Skyhopper, who's actually joining from the AMGI Studios uh, speaker uh, account. I don't know, Skyhopper, do you want to jump in on this one and introduce yourself? Uh, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Here he is. There, there you go. There you go. There you go. I'm, uh, I'm the Web3 community lead of, uh, over at My Pet Hooligan. So, I mean, so I can give you a, a pretty, pretty quick and brief overview. I know we've not got much time left here, but... The Carrot Protocol and Foundation is here to uh, it's there to empower gaming and AI entertainment ecosystems. My Pet Hooligan and AMGI Studios are essentially a launch partner for, for, for the Carrot Protocol. And, you know, there's a number of ways and, and use cases for, you know, n not only decentralized um, economies, but, but also a token within the ecosystem. And further to that, there's, there's a massive on-chain decentralized governance piece to, to Carrot as well. But in terms of what we're doing over at My Pet Hooligan and AMGI Studios is creating products. And it's creating products that interface with the blockchain, that interface with tokens, and actually bring in those utilities into the products as well. So we're leading with product first because ultimately, you know, let, let's say I, I often talk about tokens and, I, and I'd say, okay, so-and-so, uh, Go and tell me what the utility is of the top 20 tokens on CoinGecko. And in most cases, individuals don't know. The majority of reasons why people are involved in, in cryptocurrencies is purely for the speculative nature, purely for the benefit of actually being able to, to make some money in most cases, right? Um, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But, you know, what, what is important is actually delivering real-life use cases for the technology. And I think we're still sparse here. So when we talk about gaming, gaming is a use case, it's a broad use case that billions of individuals enjoy across the world. And, you know, everybody here today believes that it would be an absolutely beautiful use case for blockchain technology. Uh, for many reasons, not only kind of provenance of assets, yeah, that's cool, but also, you know, things that we're looking at here is user acquisition. So incentivize user acquisition through, you know, rewards, referrals, and exclusive in-game benefits, really to kind of drive engagement and growth and that can be done through game rewards as well so you know what you achieve in games are products participation and success and not only in the means of you know let's create a system that people can sit there and bots can grind and, and kind of benefit from no you really want to kind of benefit and give those rewards to individuals who actually contribute to the ecosystem that are actively engaging that are playing competitively that, that might be buying things from the store so i kind of see 
tokens as more of a, I'd say, like a loyalty reward scheme um, rather than come and let's get you know a million bots playing this game, which looks good for user stats, but it doesn't look good in terms of sustainability, and sustainability is really key here. Um, so, you know, the other things is any in-game purchases and payments for, for new content, items, upgrades. Uh, as with every game, you know, My Pet Hooligan and, and the other products as well. So, you know, the, the studio hasn't touched on some of the other things that they're creating, not only for consumers, but enterprise use as well. But you often have seasonal content, right? Every game that's out there that is a free-to-play game, which My Pet Hooligan has, We'll have seasonal drops, seasonal content, new game modes, new activations, and actually having, you know, other means of payment for that is also very important. Um, and there's also a kind of whole piece about interoperability and expansion, and actually bringing others into using these protocols as well. Like what what we kind of see here right now is, and and, and I think generally, by the way, stop me at any point because I can keep talking about this stuff. <laughs> Well, kind of I'm not being the one to stop you, but I do want to give David a chance when he gets ready because David's got more experience. So, David, you're up next for questions because you got these guys now. Uh, since you got a few NFTs and more experience, I want you to have the next question. Yeah, so, oh, a absolutely. And first, I want to start by saying that this is the first time it's happened to me in a space where we've got the project in the conference room on a conference call with the C-suite. I mean, let's go. Legend. Bro, what, what, get it, D-Gen Book of World Records moment on Mario Spaces for me. Like, th this is up there on the top. Absolutely love it. But, you know, you, you guys are doing so much with AI. Like, let me let me gather my thoughts here really quick. I'm, I'm kind of curious about the whole chat. By, and, and you also mentioned Tamagotchi. Like, you're, you're bringing me back to when I was young before Twitter existed. But guys, like this whole AI chatbot evolution, like where we are now, that's not where we're going to be in three months. You, you guys are probably way ahead of that. How does that tie into NFTs? Like, tell me that my NFT is going to be my lifelong best friend and then cry when I die. I'm, I'm going to jump in here. Everybody yeah. says yeah. NFTs are dead, right? Well, well, not what we're creating. They're actually alive. Uh, I'll hand back over to my pet who are going to talk about it. Alive. NFTs yeah. are alive. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like most NFTs have been this static thing that you buy. People, you know, say it's just a JPEG. We've been opposite of that from day one. But now these things are truly like a little buddy, a little, a little friend on your desk. That you know, bigger than just the game, especially with our Chat Buddy app that's going to be released soon. Um, these others will be able to you know talk to you, evolve with you, you know, ask you how that test went last week in school. Yeah. And and uh, tell you that maybe you don't want to see this movie this weekend. The other movie's better. Or you might want to stay home and. Or in, you know, it's you're 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 having somebody that knows you and evolves with you. It's like a personal companion. Now it happens to tie into the game, but it lives outside of the game as well. It has the two options there, and you know, I mean, listen, like you know, blockchain is great. It's it's about what information you want to put on chain, and for NFTs, you can put all kinds of different traits, thousands of different traits. We're taking that. We're also putting thousands of different personalities and traits in there as well. Yep. So that, Colin, you may buy another. It may be this weird, crazy German cowboy other. Or Wes, you may buy another. And it's this weird, crazy, very high strung, yeah. you know, whatever. Like so. And then what you do with that is, you know, okay, if you have a personality locked to it, what, what are you going to teach yours? What are you going to start to, to where, where do you want to take your you other? Do you want to just create yeah. content with it online? Do you want to take it in game and maybe put them on some sort of quest? Wait, and what happens things? when you put these things together and they start to talk? 100%. So now you have a history of your likes and dislikes and your specific knowledge on some obscure fact uh, that, that no one else knows. <laughs> you get these things talking together and you get a third person in there talking. Yeah. Now it's just this chaos theory. Now you have these wonderful conversations that are evolving in front of you. And you, can extrapolate, you can extrapolate that into gameplay and different. there's plenty of emergent behaviors that you're going to start to find as you start to deploy these things into game environments. And there's a yeah. lot that we can unpack there. And also, yes, potentially these things could cry for you at your funeral. Uh, <laughs> I, I love that word you just used, emergence, because that is that is so is so central yeah. to it is. what um, what this new uh, this new frontier enables. I mean, is I mean, I, I, I like like we were talking about with, uh, with with the others. I mean, just what's it going to be like when we go and throw a party for them and say, hey, you you five guys, you know, go 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 together and party and tell me what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would listen to that. Story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, for, for the OG, you know, hooligans and holders who've been here from day one, 
you know, don't worry with the others coming out. We got some really cool stuff cooking for for you know the OGs and for Zuckbots as well, and how this yeah, all started. Exactly yeah. how this all plays in, and you know, we're fortunate enough to have been around at a time where this kind of technology became readily available. It matched up really nicely with all the patents that we've created and put in house. Yes, and then you know we've been able to get the recognition that we've gotten to this date. But we know that there's such a big, bright path ahead that you know steady growth is the growth we want, and that's what we're playing. It's a long game. We want to be here for the next couple of decades with products that people, you know, say, "Oh yeah, you, that that crazy carrot coin that powers all that, and that that, that power, powers that really cool collection. That powers that really cool game. That powers the stuff that you know most people in the Web three communities will will get and see." But our goal is to break outside of that. And become so much bigger that you know we have the ability to start that movement here, and that's what we're doing. Well, that's what size. everybody's talking I mean, about. That, that's here. exactly what you're doing here. This is the spaces you would come to do something like that. That's why Mario is the number one choice for X spaces to break out of things. 100%. Kyle got his hand up. Kyle, you got a question for uh, my pet hooligan? No, no. I just I was just going to say earlier that uh, you said Tamagotchi and AI, and it, it made it immediately made my brain click. Is like. One platform doing uh, kind of that is, is called Cryptoids, and so they have like these really cute chibi style. Like, is it's that like related? Own... Hold on, is that related to anything my pet hooligan related, or are you just coming up with something totally different? No, no, no. I was just gonna say they're integrating AI into their their product stack, and, I, okay, and obviously, cool. I think... we'll, we'll. I'd love to have a uh, spaces with them uh, one day to hear a little bit more about it. Not trying to be a dick or anything, but we're short on time, uh, and I would love to hear a little bit more from my pet hooligan about what they've got uh, before we go, because he mentioned saying to old OG holders and stuff uh, that you've got a community of people that have followed you in here. What would you say? Because we are uh, about to that wrap up point. You've got people that followed you in here. You've got Mario's audience of new people. This is new discovery, which is why we went back and learned. Who who AMGI is, what Carrot is, and stuff like that. But you've also got the old community of people in here that are just wanting to see you guys shine and give you that chance uh, to, to do well in here. So what would you say to the OGs uh, as like a, a closing thoughts for those that came to listen to you? Skyhopper, you want to take that one first? Yeah, much, um, you know, as a Web3 community lead, we're nothing without our community. And like, you know, you, you've, seen, you've seen a lot of projects out there, whether they be crypto, NFT projects, that are not really showing... Showing up for the community. Uh, my pet hooligan's been here since late 2021. It's survived through the bear market. It's survived through everything. It's survived through, you know, everything being dead and being alive again. You know, we've really kind of stuck to our mission. We, whatever we set, said we were going to set out to do in 2021 on the original roadmap, we've done every single one of those things without ever having to pivot to a new narrative, uh, aside from one thing, which is the others, which is coming. And, you know, that wouldn't have been possible without having a strong community behind us. And, you know, that is essentially what fuels the whole thing. And like, you know, with anything, whether it's a brand, whether it's a product, whether it's a toy, no matter what it is, we're nothing without our community. And, you know, I'm sure you guys would share the same sentiment uh, as well. It's 100% true. And we have been, you know, the one thing that we love to do is listen. We love to be here to take in all the feedback, to grow together. And, you know, we've been a, we've been given this opportunity to have this core group follow us up until this point. And now yeah. with, you know, with Carrot out there, with the game coming, you know, with all these awesome you know things coming up this year, the others coming out, our exposure will continue to grow. And that core will, will, you know, will always be there. And new folks will come in. Yeah. But for the people who have always been there to support, man, oh, man, oh, man, from everybody here at AMGI and my pet again, we love, appreciate yeah, everything so you have grateful. done. Very grateful. It's, yeah, the grateful is, is, is like a, an understatement because to, together we build great things and that is exactly what we get to do here. And to Mario and to, you know, everybody up here has been able to, you know, help promote us, talk about us, and just share wealth and, and all the great stuff in this space today. This has been awesome. Really appreciate everybody taking the time to share the excitement with us, give us the opportunity to come up and shoot the shit for a little bit. Absolutely. And anytime anybody wants to come to AMGI Studios, please come out and check us out. <laughs> check it out. You'll see us in an office yeah. just shooting the shit like this and having some fun, but yeah. really appreciate everybody taking the time today and, and give us uh, some time. 
David, I can see why you are already uh, familiar with these guys. I came in here not knowing much, and I'm leaving here a fan of what AMGI is doing and stuff like that. We're going to round up the spaces today, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say thanks to all the guests that were here, and I'm going to let David say thanks to everybody, too, because he knew a lot more about what I did today, and then I'll close it out. David, uh, thank you for being my co-host again today, man. I always feel fortunate when you're in the, the sidecar with me driving the motorcycle, and I get to sit there with the little the little goofy glasses on while you rev the motor and stuff, dude. Appreciate it. Oh, bro, absolutely. And th this one, I had more fun in this space than I have in, like, I want to say the last 69, but I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So I'm going to just say this one was very fun. A lot, a lot of enlightening things. DGen Book of World Records moment. We got the whole conference call C-suite on us, on the spaces here with us. We're over the 15-person limit or 13-person limit, however many it goes. Elon might not like it, but we do, and that, that's what matters. Bro, like, they're, they're doing cool stuff. AI. I mean, what's, what is there not to like? But I want to thank everybody for coming out. Thanks to all the listeners, all of the speakers for coming up. Make sure everybody is following everybody because these are some of the guys that you really want to be paying attention to. So much cool shit happening in Web3 on chain with AI. And, you know, you don't want to miss it. Like, if you miss it, we're, we're going to be all the way in SOAR version 6 and ChatGPT version 69. Like, you do not want to blink right now. But this one was awesome. I can't wait till the next one, Pulse. Over to you. Dude, you know I'll be here for to it. And what I want to say to everybody is, is I appreciate both the guests that came in. You guys know the panels that we bring in are the best speakers and spaces. Make sure you follow everybody that came up. We appreciate you guys carving out the time to be here to be part of our panel. If you're one of the listeners, we appreciate you guys too. Look at the comments. Did you see we got to almost 500? I'm so impressed. I appreciate you guys putting in the legwork to bump the comments up. We'll see you at the next spaces. Remember, you're already following Mario. Follow me. Follow David. We're going to be here for all the best crypto spaces. Anytime you turn on X, the number one space is at the top of the most listeners is always a Mario Nawfall Spaces, whether it's politics, crypto, or anything else. Make sure you're following Mario, and we'll catch you next time on the Mario Nawfall X Spaces. Have a great afternoon, everybody. We appreciate you. Let's go.